Two days ago, we went on an absolute dream trip. We've been speaking about it for years. It's been on the vision board and it finally came true. The thing is, is that we actually had to go on this trip twice and we will be explaining why in this video. If you guys have seen our channel before, you know that we typically do travel vlogs where we, we take you with. However, dealing with crazy wind, dealing with wet cameras, trying to get decent audio, especially with like the speed of this tour. It just wasn't possible to make this video in that format. So it's gonna be partially sit down, partially come along with us to best explain the experience. Stick around till the end of this video because we're gonna be sharing our top tips of how to make the most of this tour, as well as how to avoid the mistakes we did the first time around. Every summer, the ocean's gentle giants embark on an incredible journey across the sea towards the Mexican Caribbean, where they feast on the abundant food supply of the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef. We had the extraordinary privilege of swimming alongside these gentle giants, capturing the magic firsthand. Join us in this episode as we bring you along on this once-in-a-lifetime experience to catch a glimpse into the lives of the remarkable whale shark. So it's not even 5.30 a.m. and we're already sitting out here waiting to be collected for our dream excursion today. When I say we've been dreaming of this, literally the last three years, it's been held in my head and it's happening in real life today. And it's only happened in a few places in Mexico yeah. and in the world, actually. Yes, and only during a certain period of the year. So this is super special. We're going with Ocean Tours again. We went with them last time on an amazing tour, so we're super excited. And the bus is already here. Once everyone is picked up from hotels in Playa del Carmen, Riviera Maya and Cancun, we arrive to Flamingo's Dog. <laughs> we cannot predict what's going to happen, but I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of whale sharks today. Like sometimes, 200. Yeah, sometimes people literally go out and see like 201 go. So that's that's my vibe for today. That's what we're going to see today. Hashtag vibes. Hashtag vibes. <laughs> We had a light breakfast of some fruit, pastry, coffee, and ginger tea. Mm -hmm. This one? Yeah. You are going on very bumpy ocean, so you definitely don't want to have like anything too big or greasy. Don't think that's a good idea. And we were also given sea sickness pills. Take them, even if you th think you don't need them, take them. Good morning, I'm feeling great. I'm so grateful that we get to do this tour a second time around. If that's something that I can actually say is if you are coming to the Riviera Maya for a week, try plan your, your whale shark tour is one of the very first things that you do just in case you don't end up seeing the whale sharks, you've got ample time to reschedule. That's something that, I mean, we live here, so we're very fortunate, but I would recommend not saving it until the last day because if you don't see them, you're not gonna have another chance. So right in the beginning of the video we mentioned that we went on the tour twice. This wasn't for fun. The first time we actually didn't end up seeing any whale sharks, which keep in mind that these are wild animals out in the open ocean. There is absolutely no guarantee that you are going to find them, that you're going to see them, or that you're even going to be able to swim with them. Chances are very high, but mm, it's not always the case. Something that we noticed between the two tours is the first time the boat went north along the Quintana Roo coast towards is the Holbosch. Second time we went more northeast towards is the Mujeres. It's just basically a big massive area of the ocean that the boats ride around in searching for the whale sharks. Yeah. Did you just see my leg? A turtle. A turtle. Once we got to the site where we we're looking for the, the whale sharks, so the, the boat actually slowed down in order to start looking out for, for the fins, which is where you, what you are looking for in order to swim with them. We have arrived to the spotting area, all right? So everybody, all the boats around us are looking for the whale shark. We need to look for fins, okay? Look for fins. I think we found it. I think we found it. I think we found it. I should see. It's there. It's there. I saw it. We found them. I mean, we spot them. We are getting closer to them. Oh, these. That's still two pins. But they so might see like the front and the back. Like oh the, the no, the but back. they were right next to each other. I don't know. We're hoping. We were the first boat actually to spot 
to spot one of the whale sharks, but we were probably two or three minutes by ourselves until the other boats came, as I mentioned before, because they're in constant communication. So once a boat knows, the other boats will know definitely. Yeah, yeah. So we spotted our first whale shark. It was so exciting. When you actually see them from the boat, they don't look that big. I mean, they look big, but they don't look that big until, until you jump. Oh my gosh. Once you've arrived at the whale sharks, just know that everything moves very fast. There's no time to waddle around and think about it. Like you've got to be prepared to go, go, go. You have one feed on the boat, one feed already to jump. Mm -hmm. So you have to listen and you have to also follow your guide. So once the captain say jump, you jump. Hey, so hello, hello. It was amazing. It went, to be honest, it goes like that. You're in the water maybe a minute, two minutes, and the whale's there and gone. But beautiful, beautiful to see. It's a lifetime experience. <laughs> Basically, what we notice about ocean tours, which we absolutely love and admire, is they have a strict policy to only allow two guests out of the boat at one time with one guard. Quite a lot of the other boats were actually allowing all of the guests to hop off at one time, which is very unfair for the whale sharks because not only are there hundreds of boats where they're trying to swim, there's also hordes of people swimming around them at one time, which I mean, can't be great. The second thing we noticed quite a few of the, the boat captains were cutting in front of other boats and they were like desperate to like get in there, you know. There was a patrol that actually cut from is a contour that was around there that I think eventually told all the boats to dissipate a bit but something I really appreciate about our boat captain and our tour guide Silvana is after we had all got our first swim with the whale sharks they actually navigated completely away from those hordes of boats until we found another whale shark where there was only one or two boats around so that we could get our second jump without overloading the three or four whale sharks that were in that one area. All right, so we're getting a chance to jump in a second time. And they're not predator, pre predatory. So you don't have to be afraid of them. They are not predatory animals. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't eat you whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So they are actually eating the plankton that are on the surface. But the throat, the size of the throat is about our size of our fist. Yeah, so it's physically impossible for them yeah. to swallow you. The biggest applause for the whale sharks for staying alive! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Here go, living creatures! <laughs> Yeah. By the way, if you're traveling to the Riviera Maya, Giovanni and I made a very helpful guide of all the things that you need to know before you visit. So if you want to grab that, you just need to sign up to our newsletter, which you can find in the bio. Okay, so we got a sandwich with ham, cheese, tomato, lettuce and a bit of mayo. It's kind of just kind of like a midday snack. We're still going to have lunch a bit later. So after the whale shark experience, we navigated to a part of the Mesoamerican Barrier Reef <laughs> <laughs> that is located just off of the coast of Isla Mujeres. Uh, something that we noticed is the first time, because of the area that we were that we were in trying to find the whale sharks, we snorkeled in a completely different part of the ocean. I think we were closer to Isla Contoy. Just waiting for us right there. Feeling better, Malifia. Mm, I'm feeling better. So we didn't see any whale sharks, but we do see some flamingos, which was unexpected. The second time we went to Isla Mujeres. Got to snorkel. We 
did see a starfish and Giovanni was very lucky to see an eagle, eagle ray. ray. Aside from getting to see the whale sharks, you have like a full day experience. You see the whale sharks, you go snorkeling, and then you get to go to Isla Mujeres, which we're about to explain. So now we are in Isla Mujeres, which is why the water is so incredibly blue. We're like just off the shore, we're gonna hop in, get wet, and then we're gonna be served our food in the water. That is so freaking cool. Actually, we are in Playa Norte, which is the most famous beach in Isla Mujeres, and, and we're gonna jump. Basically, while we were enjoying the water, Silvana and the crew were uh, preparing our lunch, which was a fresh ceviche and a guac. Guac, yeah. Yep. And we got our drinks and our lunch literally delivered to us in the water, which was such a cool experience. So we're going to actually be eating and drinking here in the water. Yeah. Yeah, it was so good. Oh my god. Are you crying? Yeah, it was, it was a really, really nice day. I'm very grateful for it. What an adventure! <laughs> So we've now got into the part of the video where we're going to be sharing our top tips so that you can make the most of your trip to see the whale sharks. Number one, seasickness. As you saw, I got horrifically sick on the first trip and it ruined my experience. I honestly, I felt horrible. I wasn't even able to look up at the ocean to enjoy it. It was terrible. Uh, the first time I went, I took a seasickness pull one time about an hour before we got out on the boat and I thought I'd be fine. I was not fine. Remember you are in the deep ocean and there's a lot of movement. So what I did the second time around is we went and we bought a chunk of uh, fresh ginger. I peeled it, I boiled it for about 45 minutes in a little bit of water and then we made a, a drink out of that with some fresh mint, some sugar, and some sparkling water and we had a big bottle of that drink with us on the boat and I had a few cups of that ginger tea the night before. I also took a seasickness pill the night before as well as about two hours before we got on the boat and it worked like a charm. I didn't get sick at all. My second experience was much better not being sick. Second thing, as you guys saw, I got horrifically sunburned the first time, like one of the worst sunburns I've ever had in my life. The reason for this is you're actually not allowed to wear sunscreen at all. It is strictly prohibited. The reason for that is because the sunscreen actually comes off of your skin and it forms a layer on top of the ocean, which prevents the sun rays from penetrating the ocean, which means that the, the reef and the marine life suffer majorly. So no sunscreen at all. What I did the second time around is I wore my UPF 50 plus sun shirt. It is not the most beautiful, not the most fashionable thing in the world, but to be honest, I don't care. It worked like a charm. I did not get burns at all on my upper body. My face got a little bit burnt, but I mean, it's just part of it. If you are looking for one of those, we have linked a few in our description below. If you happen to be in the tour and you don't have your UPF protection shirt, um, Ocean Tours have a little like um, hut where they sell kind cotton, of like shirts. cotton shirts. Although we did notice that they don't sell the UPF shirts, they're only cotton shirts, but I suppose something is better than nothing. Yeah. Something that you have to understand is that these animals migrate. You can find them in Australia, Philippines, Cabo, and of course here. So in this area, there's a strict date where you can swim with a whale shark and it starts from June 1st all the way to September 17th. So only during those days, boats are allowed to go to the, to the side and swim with the whale sharks. Yeah. Plus, that's the, the period that they're actually here because they're not here all year round. Well, there's a theory that swimming with the whale sharks and to have a higher chance to see more of them is during the full moon cycle. So, few days after, on a uh, few days before and few days after are the best days. Reason why is because the light comes from the full moon that shines to the water, illuminates the plankton that is the main food source for the whale sharks to come to the surface 
and eat them so chances are to see them and to see more yeah so in terms of what to actually bring along on the day you will need to bring cash everyone is responsible for paying 15 us dollars in cash only for the marine fee something like that that is paid to your tour guide over and above the cost of the actual tour per person per person another thing is the dock actually has shower and bathroom facilities so keep in mind that when your your tour is done you're going to be in wet bathing suits and then you're getting into an air-conditioned van to be transported back to your accommodation so we would recommend bringing a towel and a change of clothes so that you can be nice and dry Another thing is bring your GoPro along, but make sure that it's got some kind of wrist, wrist strap, neck Catch strap, man. something like that, because honestly, things just move so quickly that you, you don't want to lose your GoPro. Alternatively, Ocean Tours actually does their very best to record footage of everyone in the tour, including your time in the water. So you can actually pay an additional, I think it's somewhere around $50 for that photo slash video package. Totally worth it if you don't want to be wasting your time trying to figure out cameras and stuff. Honestly, the experience goes like that. Rather just rely on the photo and video package to get memories from it because yeah, the experience just goes really quickly. And as you saw, the footage that we that we got from Ocean Tours was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I mean, these guys do it every day. They know how to film. Yeah. Yeah. If you are based in the Riviera Maya, obviously we would recommend going with Ocean Tours because they are such an ethically well-run company. However, if you are thinking of taking the whale shark tour from Holbosch or Isla Mujeres, we would probably advise against just picking up a random vendor on the beach because you really don't know if they're going to be ethical or if they're going to be like one of those boats that we spoke about earlier where they just let everyone jump at the same time. The captains are cutting in and out of everyone. We actually love to use Get Your Guide because it is such a reliable place to go and look at reviews from people that have actually gone on the boats. So yeah, find your tour on Get Your Guide because that's how you're going to be able to find the most ethical tour. And then the very last tip that we have for you is have reasonable expectations. Just like going on a safari in Africa, which Giovanni got to experience, so nice. this is the wild. You really cannot predict whether you are going to see whale sharks, whether you're going to see 500 of them, whether you're going to see one, whether you're going to see none. Just have those reasonable expectations. Don't be disappointed if you don't see them the first time because if you book on one of your first days of your vacation and have a little bit of flexibility, there is always a chance to go a second time. And the chances are highly likely that you're going to see them on the second time around. Yeah. If you wanna swim with the whale shark with Ocean Tours, we are leaving the link in the description. If you are not here during the whale shark season, another tour that we can recommend from Ocean Tours is the Isla Contoy Tour, which is an amazing experience. And if you're traveling to the Riviera Maya and you need some assistance in finalizing your itinerary or if you're looking for some advice and tips, we do offer a consulting service which you can book down in the description. If you made it this far in the video, let us know by commenting three little whales in the comment section. Yeah, and if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to our channel. And that being said, we will see you in the next episode. Hasta, Hasta luego. luego. <laughs> it's so lame. <laughs> Or hopping on the whale shark. You don't hop on the whale shark. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, guys. It's hard. So now that the full whale shark experience is over, 